Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of Resonate BJD podcast. And today's topic, we'll be talking about elitism. So before we get started with all of the discussion surrounding that topic, who did you bring today? Show and tell lies. I, I have to turn my mic on. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Yeah, so this is Amber. She's my um, mini feed reins that I had modded by Tonoja. Like her face was modded from a sleeping face. I don't know if you can see it, but her eyes are actually open. Yeah, it's too dark. But yeah, her eyes are actually open. They just kind of small. But you know, that's what I want for her. So. Very cool. I like her wig. Thank you. Colorful. So who did you bring today, Nova? Um, I have my uh, fairy lion boy. He's on the Erda body, and he's got the, I think it's the Nannery 19. No, it's the Nannery 17 head. I always get the event heads mixed up. So he doesn't have the Erda head. <laughs> oh, yeah, can, you, cool. can you actually move him a little closer? Like, his yeah. face looks cute. <laughs> yeah, his face like, kind of cute. Push, <laughs> push. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, the zoom. Was it? The, is that Leapy or? It's the Ondin. Oh, one of the little petite gym guys. God, I love those. I love that scalp, but you know, we talk <laughs> about scalper. Oh yeah, they're hard to <laughs> get a hold of these things. Yeah, unless they like on a whim that soon decides to release yeah. something. So <laughs> hopefully, but they've been doing it more regularly. So hopefully, yeah, there's that's good. more coming out. One day I'll get the Nolden. For sure. <laughs> and then I brought my Alana today. So Alana came uh-huh. to me earlier this week and she's in the turquoise color. And I actually do think this color is a lot more accurate than when I opened her on Instagram. So she's naked as all my dolls tend to be because I am lazy and I don't sew for them, but I should. But um, I'll be making her a wig soon. And I guess part of it is that I just appreciate the dolls when they first come and I just admire them and I like take them around because when they don't have face ups or, you know, hair, I don't have to worry about stuff getting messed up. Sometimes I'll put them on the bed and just keep me company, which is weird. I'm just like, oh, I look over and I just like pet them and I'm like, everything. Yeah, there's just something about like <laughs> new dolls that you can just kind of carry them around. We're like, yes. <laughs> This exactly. is my new baby. <laughs> so I'll put her here because otherwise I didn't see her head pop out. Oh, Nova, I think you're talking. We can't hear you. Hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> I think I was on mute. <laughs> cool. Okay, so elitism. I think that's a topic that's going to be a lot to unpack, to say the least. Um, <laughs> it was brought to us by our viewer on YouTube, Tim Burton Lover, and I believe she goes by the lovely Ghosty. It's a really cute user username. So hello yeah. to her and thanks for <laughs> suggesting this awesome topic for us. So I don't know. It's 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 a very I think emotional topic when it comes to elitism. So it's a messy topic, I think. <laughs> I think so. It's on the topic I think level of recap. So I guess like when it comes to elitism, is it something that you've experienced yourself personally? And if so, how did you react to it? Because I think it's going to vary depending on what type of doll you collect or how involved you are with certain people. Because for me, prior to like, you know, talking with you guys and um, Chaco and Scathe, I was just in my own lane. I had some friends who were involved in dolls and we kind of just did our own thing. We all were like, hey, what's going on to your doll? But it wasn't anything that we could find drama about to talk about. So I don't know if it's like <laughs> doll specific, age specific, a combination of other factors. So yeah, um, Vari, I guess like when you were new in the hobby, was that something that you faced first? And if so, like how did you navigate some of that? Well, it's not like what, it's not what I experienced as a newbie. It's more of what I experienced when I'm like, when I was like a year or two into it. And I don't know if this count as elitism, but someone actually threatened me through a trade that they were like, they basically were like, yeah, you have, you have like less follower than me. So how does that make me a scammer? <laughs> basically, okay. Uh, long story short, the trade is that like I gave her, so I give her something. She gave me something, right? Basic trade. And uh, her package got lost in the USPS system because her, 
like a label fell out. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, the label of the box fell out. That's why it stayed in there for like a month. Yeah, While my packaging. package, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, because unless you fix it or you use like a pen that got wet, you know, yeah. then that's just all part of selling, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I, I ship my part to her priority. I should have told her that I also want priority. Priority. She just kind of like she just ship it first class. So it took a while. I get that. But yeah, the label fell out, and I was like, I was stressed. I was like, oh yeah, can you just check again with USPS? Can you like, or like at least like give me like a little money, a little bit of money for the placeholder, just in case the package actually get lost. Which I guess like is not really a best, the best thing to do in that case, because. But you know, I was stressed. I was new to the hobby. I didn't know what else to do, in mm-hmm. at that point, and. She sent her family member after my ass, and what he was like, yeah, like I don't care what you say. She has more follower than you, so if you do bring this to the light, you're gonna be the one who got damaged because, like, you just like a low, low level like newbie in the hobby. I'm just like. That's awful because I don't see why your follower count has anything to do with whether or not someone gets their doll. It's like, did you package the doll well? If you didn't, then your follower count has no bearing on that whatsoever. And I guess like for your, for that experience for you, it was more like, because you were new, like the elitism was like, I'm somebody in the hobby. You're nobody. So yeah, I think that's, that's really crappy because that doesn't mean you can do bad dolly deals just because you have more followers. And let's be real, like a lot of people, probably that person too, has a lot of bots. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> based off of their content, you know, it, do you think they would have? I don't know. I'm just I, being a I little bit shady. I bots, but you know what? <laughs> I'm being shady because like, I feel like if you, wh- why would you care so much about followers? Like I wouldn't care so much about that as I would my reputation, right? Like yeah. I wouldn't want to be known for somebody who was, a jerk or who put a family member on somebody who is new to the hobby just to throw away, throw around the weight of my followers. Yeah. You know, I would ensure everything, you know, I would make sure they have a positive experience because at the end of the day, your name and your reputation is something that you can 100% relatively control depending on how you act. Right. Yep. So, I actually so, didn't bring that out too late at all. Like I kept the entire tray a secret, but I guess, uh, I don't know if, the other person did they have been known to complain a lot so i don't know if they complain about me after they blocked me this happens like two years ago so yeah like i don't i think they still block me but i don't care about that that much anymore but it was a really weird and stressful experience i don't want anyone to actually deal with yeah. but thinking because they were like oh yeah you nobody so at that point I was like at that time I was like okay I am nobody (laughs) I'm I'm just not gonna post anything about this I'm just happy I got my dolls and that's it I sold it immediately I can't deal with it yeah (laughs) bad experiences tend to taint things for me um, as well and uh, we could talk you talk a little bit more about I guess (laughs) <laughs> people who use their follower accounts to get what they want. And I think that's not a right way to do things. But oh, what I meant to ask was, did, did you have any like network of like doll people you could talk to? Or was it just like you yourself trying to figure this out? That was, at that time, it was just me. It was just me. I didn't know anyone in the hobby. I was, I think I was at, at like, I guess a hundred followers at most at the time. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh God, I am nobody. You know, anxiety kick in. I was depressed for like the next few months. I was Mm -hmm. like, oh God, that was really bad. That was a really bad trade. Yeah, I feel like that can really turn people away from the hobby too because it's not not a welcoming or nice experience into the hobby, which unfortunately, you know, some people have had that. And it's a good thing that you stuck around and then um, your paths crossed because for those who don't know, like Nova, um, Avari and I, we actually met because of a, another bad trade that <laughs> Avari had with, um, I'm just going to name this person, AJ Messenger. Oh, that's the alias she goes by. Yeah. So yeah, but <laughs> we were able to get, you know, Avari's doll back for her. And we created a good friendship with, you know, like I said, Chaco and Skate. So 
it's funny how like we can be unified with scammers, but at the end of the day, if you have a good support network, um, yeah. it makes it a lot easier to navigate because we all know that what you experienced was unacceptable, right? But sometimes, yeah, that, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I feel like you're like, I feel helpless. I don't know what to do. Nobody knows who I am. I mean, clearly, I guess status is a thing if this person is saying that I'm a nobody. Like, that's also pretty yeah. horrible because I would it's never... really hard that. on newcomers, too, because I'm sure that makes them feel unwelcome. And, like, you have to even have a big following to even matter in the hobby. Yeah, that's actually how I felt at the time. I was like, oh, this is how this hobby is going to be. I'm going to have to know someone to actually survive in this. And that's not what I want to do because it's a hobby. This is dolls. Why are we doing this? Yeah, it's unnecessarily salty for sure. <laughs> so what about you, Nova? Have you experienced something, not, maybe not a bad trade, but a, like elitism in some shape or form in a hobby? I know Avaris is more like based off of like your own status in the hobby. But what about you know, something similar for you or maybe dolls or? I mean, one of the first friends I made in the hobby was a strictly mini fee collector. And so I started out with mini fees as well, but anytime I would get a doll from a different company, they would be like totally not excited. <laughs> Wouldn't even talk to me about it. But then if I got like a mini fee that was on the way incoming, they'd be super excited to hear about that. So I think that's a situation where I did with mini fees experience elitism. Mm -hmm. which they are my favorite type of doll but they're definitely not the only kind i collect yeah i definitely feel like there are some like the elitism part in this hobby kind of ev involve around mini fees a lot i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> like i don't think anyone does but like i i like some mini fee sculpt i don't like the old sculpt where like the heads are too big but the new ones like the rain sculpt i think it's nice it's my favorite of Fairyland and I do a lot of splits not a lot but like I do splits and stuff for Fairyland now uh so like I don't know like it's just it feels weird when you go into the hobby and you expect like oh yeah like look at all these people with such like pretty dolls if I want to be somebody in this hobby I'm gonna have to collect that same type stress <laughs> yeah for sure yeah, it's definitely the kind of air you get at first, but I don't know. I like diversity in my collection, too, so I like to get short ones and tall ones and all that stuff, lots of different types. For sure. So, like, for me, I don't have any mini fee dolls, so I don't really understand, you know, what, what it's like to have, to face that. But I've seen, like, in various groups like Addicts and whatnot that, they're like, hey, should I get a mini fee? But it's weird because like some people are like, yeah, I totally get a mini fee. But other people are saying they're too expensive and they have bad quality control. So there's like very distinct, like polarizing viewpoints yeah. when it comes to mini fee. And I guess it's weird because it reminds me a lot of like Volks compared to everybody else. Like, oh my like God, yeah. Early <laughs> on in the hobby, right? And I think there's still some residual feelings from that. But I feel like nowadays it's very rare that we see how it was like at least when I when, yeah. when I was in the hobby like 2003 that it's it's not the same as it was before like they kind of just stay in their own lane or that's how it feels to me and they have their own little community and world but I think now I always see it's like mini fee versus like everybody else <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah was it like when when because you guys has been have been in the hobby for much longer than I am I yeah how like when do you think mini fee just like started sprinting up like everyone wants one i'm gonna defer to you nova on this because <laughs> you're the i think <laughs> you were probably about 2009 ish or something because i mean at first oh, they wow. were a sister company of lutz and then they kind of separated and became their own company and then yeah about 2009 and past then is when i'd say that their biggest rise was in popularity oh wow <laughs> like i know that they were sister company of uh, Lutz. I don't know how to say that name. It's not so weird when you say Lutz. <laughs> but yeah, like, <laughs> really? yeah, like I know it was sister company of that one, but like I don't know because when I came into the hobby, it was already one a thing. It was super intimidating because, like, for for Peter said, like it was expensive. 
that was hard to get. Like it was something like when I came into the hobby, I thought it was something that's so rare that they only release one, like ten dolls a year. <laughs> that's why it's so expensive. And I'm just like, now that I have one, I'm like, all right, I can see why people like it. It has like interchange, interchangeable parts. I really like the magnet feet and hands, and the head uh, mechanism. But uh, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was worth that hype a few years ago. But that's just like my personal opinion. Yeah, I think like, they pose really well for their price, but they I do feel like they are on the high end of the price spectrum. And there's not really a lot of justification. But they pose really well, and they're pretty durable dolls. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah, I think um, part of it with the mini fee too is that you have a lot of collectors. They're they're good doll that you know if you decide to pick this doll because you truly like the doll. Um, there's lots of accessories you can buy, you know, wigs and clothing because people specifically make items for them. <laughs> oh yeah, they're like usually top sellers, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I feel like there there's a lot of like flexibility, but like over time, like don't let that you know dictate you know what what you buy mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I guess, like, it's not uncommon for people to want to have, like, a support network or a group of friends where they can talk about dolls that they're interested in. Like Nova said, her, I don't know if you're still friends with that person, but, you know, maybe you have, like, just a mini fee friend and you have, like, everybody else. But at the end of the day, like, I would hope that the friendships that you make in the hobby, like, it would be a friendship not based off of what you buy, which... It seems kind of sad if that's the case, you know. I yeah. mean, I feel like if you buy it all that makes you happy, like that's that's all I really want to hear about from people. You know, I don't want to. Oh yeah, definitely buy a doll that does spark joy. <laughs> For sure, spark and, joy. Yeah, and you see stuff because I know that like, um, like Scave tends to like a lot of fantasy characters, and yeah, and I normally would never look at any of those dolls that you know <laughs> she links and stuff, but like she shares them, and I'm like holy cow, that's really cool. Like, I've never seen anything like it before. And I'm, like, intrigued by it. I might not necessarily want to buy it, but you can see the artistry involved. And you're like, okay, you know, this is cool. Like, I would have never had this on my radar because I tend to look at certain companies. Yeah. And, yeah, so it's, like, I think it's nice just to be able to talk about various dolls versus what you like because you could expand <laughs> things and then yeah. you can go in different directions. Because even for me, um, I never really liked fantasy dolls at all, which is weird because everybody that I've been showing and you guys know what I buy, they're like, wait, what? <laughs> and I only like like normal color resins, like normal, like skin tone color resins. I have like a green doll here now. <laughs> and the and spider yeah. from last time. Yeah, exactly. And like fantasy characters are over my head. I'm like, ugh. I don't know why people like elves and all that stuff. It's weird. And I have like a purple Dora on layaway and I got her a centaur. I mean, she goes on centaur body, but I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, I'm okay with centaurs. Like, you know, we've got some druids for our centaurs, you know, sometimes horses and half humans, it's a little bit weird, but you know, I'm like, it's kind of cool. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm excited about it. And you know, just things I would have never thought my collection would be where it is today compared to like, you know, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago. Because I only like human characters, and now I'm like, that's so boring. <laughs> oh yeah, we are very good in a plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess in addition to like you know those kind of like interactions, like have you guys like personally like experienced anything else that I guess would kind of make you be like rage quit or just be like, ugh, no, I, I hate this about the doll hobby. I'll never come back. Like. I know that your experience is pretty, pretty brutal, um, Nova, with that bad trade. But anything else, maybe not on that caliber, but more like, hey, I'm gonna see what you like. If I don't like what you like, then I'm just gonna throw you out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty brutal. Um, I haven't had too much hate. I mean, I notice uh, some people kind of act a little bit elit elitist when they collect SDs, and you only collect MSDs because. I stick to one size because I don't really like the big ones. I like staring at them, but they're just not for me. So I, I sort of have experienced a little bit of slight elitism there. 
for size. I, that's actually yeah. the first time I've heard of that. Like, I know some people prefer a certain size. Like, I, I have friends who only collect, like, tiny dolls. I can't deal with them personally because they're too small to find anything to fit. But, like, yeah, my preferred size is MSD. But I actually okay. have not heard about anyone who's actually like, oh, you collect smaller dolls than me. You're not worth talking to. <laughs> Well, it's not like you're not worth talking to, but I've 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 been to a meet where literally I was the only one with an MSD, and that oh, was a wow. little bit awkward. <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, I'm the only one with a small doll," and I let it sit on everybody all funny, like and pick on people. So yeah, <laughs> that is weird. I I don't know what I would do in a situation like that if I went to a meetup and like my <laughs> doll was the odd size doll out, you know, and I rolled with it. I think it could be cute. It could be cute. So there's a little bit of musical chairs because we ran out of a little bit of time, <laughs> but all good. You probably saw that um, Avare and Nova switch spots, but yeah, let's get back to what we're talking about. So, you know, it's kind of funny when we talk about um, the elitism because I do remember like back in the day, early on in the hobby, you had your Volks camp and then you had like people like me who tend to like a lot of the Korean dolls because like Lutz was around at the time and they were, you know, kind of, I don't want, they were competitors. They were all competitors, but they were like, you know, the other Korean company in addition to Custom House. And then afterwards, you had like Dream of Doll, DOD Dolls. Mm -hmm. And they had like these mini dolls, like the, like it's like 2 A. A. I don't know how to say 2 A and B A or B A, one of those. So they actually sold them. Um, I think they had like stats where you could buy two of them. And people, you know, they tend to buy that or they bought them and they split them with a friend. But those dolls were kind of looked down on for a while. And it's weird because, like, I think they were looked down because everyone had them. It was just, like, the trendy dolls to have. And they were cheaper than, like, the other dolls that, like, Custom House and Volks were making. And Lutz, too. Because back then you could, got, you could only get, like, a mini or, like, an SD-sized doll. And it wasn't until later they started adding the smaller options. And the mini dolls were at least three hundred dollars. Like th that was your only option. And the SD dolls, they started at five hundred. Doesn't matter. That was the base price of nearly all the basic sets. And nowadays we have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And you know the DoD company, they also released like SD size dolls. Um, they were popular, and many people bought them. But there's also they were kind of like the cheap company that people are like meh about. But they had their own little community and followers. And that kind of brings me up to like Dollzo. So when Dollzo came, Dollzo came on the scene, like no one liked their dolls. Okay, I'm kind of exaggerating, but they were the company that everyone just crapped on. Dollzo was like a Chinese company. They were accused of actually copying a lot of the Korean dolls. I actually heard that. Yeah, and um, their sculpts back then, especially like Mo and they're not my aesthetic, but like they had a bunch of them and I had a friend who collected them. And I think to some degree, I kind of looked down on them. I mean, because they weren't the company that I liked. So I totally get where that is. But like, I've grown up since then. And I'm like, <laughs> if you like it and you can afford it, who am I to really say anything about it, right? Like, and it's, I think, hard not to get caught up in that mentality because you have like a network or a friend group who they all collect certain things. So somebody who like deviates from it, you're kind of like, maybe we throw some eggs, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do we want to do Question that? marks. <laughs> exactly. So, so we have, you know, that and, but yeah, it's, and I see dolls are now and I've ordered a few of their dolls as, as well. And mm -hmm. it's like night and day difference, but like back then they were, they were looked down upon quite a bit and they're like, they were, that they then kind of became like the cheapest company compared to like dream of doll DOD. And that's you only bought Chinese dolls if you were, you know, if you didn't have any money or you couldn't afford, you know, a doll that was from like one of the more established companies. And um, I mean, it's good that Den of Angels didn't allow that to didn't allow that kind of behavior to exist on their website, like on their forum, because they could have easily blocked doll zone from really the people sharing their dolls and yes. dolls but they didn't because there was like there was no signs that it was actually like sculpted or recast or stolen or whatever it was and since then we've seen that 
Asian companies, specifically Chinese companies, have experienced quite like a boom when it comes to, you know, the ball joint and doll hobby. But they were definitely not on the scene at all, like back in the day. It was definitely um, Japanese and Korean. That's I've always noticed that their clothing is really well made and nice, and their full sets are also really nice. So yeah, that, that is kind of interesting to know. I think I used to have like um, one of the older sculpt. I can't remember her name, but like she was, she was the sister of the mall sculpt. She was really like she has the older body too. I think she was really pretty and like nice and sturdy. Great poster for like someone for a doll that's single jointed. Yeah, that was one thing that um, I, I remember a lot of people like dolls in because their dolls actually posed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I still have one of my old custom house dolls, and she's a terrible poser, like horrible, horrible poser. And single jointed doll. It wasn't until later that double jointed yeah. dolls came on, came on the scene. But like her back would be like this, and then you pop it <laughs> forward, it's like this. So it's just like, but theirs actually was like I can sit up straight, you know, versus like ugh. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, so that was, that was like a blast from the past. But, and it's funny how like some hobby, like just in general hobbies, they always have like some kind of elitist um, slant mm -hmm. to it because, you know, like you guys know that I started getting to 3D printing and there's also a community about like superiority and like how you're not really part of the hobby unless you tinker and spend more time on your printer like fixing it versus actually printing and it's like oh you know if you got this printer ugh, that's not go away you know you pay too much for that printer it's not that good you know it's the same it's the same any hobby you go into oh, yeah I think there's elitism in every hobby for sure I definitely feel like like things like that as they're going on with this hop the doll hobby like uh Take resin soul and bubble bee for examples. They got shit on so often. I don't know why because they their customer service was actually really great. Like I only order straight from the company for that for those brands, and I think it's really great that they respond really fast. Like most likely just within one one day, most most of the time. And the production time was fast. They were willing to sculpt, like they were willing to mod the dolls for you for like a very low price. The dolls are actually not bad quality either. I don't know why everyone just kind of like shit on their dolls or the sculpts. I'm just like, go do something else. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't understand either. Like with Resin Soul, like a lot of their sculpts are not really my aesthetic, but I can say that about a lot of other companies, right? <laughs> not just Resin Soul or Bobobi. And I I also feel like personally, there's just so many choices now that I, I don't, I don't look at everything out there, which is fine, but um, I know what I like, but like, I wouldn't be so close minded to write off companies that I haven't even purchased from or really looked at what they offered and I think resin sold is the soul um the, the soul matching the resin matching <laughs> and um I think that's a really cool service that a lot of people you know should offer that they don't offer and that's amazing that they can do something like that whereas other companies that tend to be more expensive they, uh, they, yeah. they don't do that <laughs> you couldn't even pay them to do that <laughs> Yeah, they they were very willing. I because I remember I wanted like a four arms, like three eyes dolls, and I messaged them and they were like, "All right, a hundred dollars, I'll do it for you." I'm like, "Holy shit, okay." Wait, what did you do? You, do you, what did you get? I guess you got what you asked for, right? Like, oh no, no, I didn't actually got that because uh, at the time I was like, I didn't have enough money to actually okay. get the mod. So I only got like the basic dolls, but I sent them a message anyways. I was like, yeah, like, I just want to know if you guys do this because I know a lot of company doesn't. And they were like, yeah, dude, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I think the cool. only thing Resin Soul is bad at is taking pictures of their own sculpts. Oh my God, yeah. They need to show <laughs> like better pictures. Yeah, I heard about that. Like, it's just, it's... So it's like, I guess like the chicken or the egg situation, right? They, they spend a lot like on the customer service and like, you know, offering services that nobody else does, but then they don't spend time on their own product <laughs> promotion. Oh yeah. Like customer photos look so much better than the actual 
company's photo. Right. And I think like it, it's a cheaper price point than I, I just don't really understand like why people like to kind of be rude about it because at the end of the day, like you should never go into debt for any hobby. I, I, I know we'll talk about this later in like another episode, <laughs> but I think that there's a lot of focus on just YOLO, you know, just spend your money. You're going to die the next day, but no, but realistically, like you probably won't die of a heart attack or whatever the next day. Like you probably want financial freedom in the sense that you could, you know, one day, buy a home um Mm -hmm. you know pay your rent you know all sorts of things (laughs) like buy groceries but it's kind of funny because I won't deviate too much but I remember one of my friends told me that they had a friend who like was like the biggest Volks person ever and Volks at the time Mm -hmm. was a very expensive company and they still kind of are to this day but (laughs) they have good customer service they do events so that's cool but um I was like how on earth does this person afford their dolls like at the time I wasn't making that much money like I am now, but that was also like 10 years ago. <laughs> but uh, I just didn't understand. I'm like, what on earth are they doing? Because they seem to get a new SD size doll, even if it's limited or a new full choice system one. And I was like, what is going on here? Like, I don't understand. And I didn't feel like that, you know, my job paid them less than like, you know, paid them less than what my job paid me. Didn't understand it. <clears throat> not, not at all. And it turned mm-hmm. out like once I talked to her that, she literally ate like ramen packets every day like every single day um so she could afford her dolls and I'm like hey the more power to you that's that's cool but I don't want to eat ramen every day and I still want to be able to go out to eat but she like sacrificed everything for you know her hobby right (laughs) some hardcore dedication it's a very extreme way of thinking it right like and, and then I think since then they had a ton of dolls and that's cool I mean I'm all about what makes you happy and what you want to do to get to where you need to be. But for me, I tend to also enjoy like having some extra money to like go out to eat or yeah. you know going <laughs> on trips and stuff like that. I don't want it just to be tied up in resin that, you know, I have at home, but if other people get joy from that, then, you know, that's totally okay. We're all different people, but um, yeah, but I think, you know, back to what I was saying, the resin sold all is like the dolls that are at a price point just because they're a budget option doesn't mean that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a bad option. It's more like if you want to be part of the hobby, you like the dolls, um, they make it available so that you can, you know, get a doll that you like at your price point and there should be no shame or any making fun of people for it. Yeah. I actually like, I remember talking to someone about this. I don't remember who, I don't think they're in the hobby anymore, but like, they were new, kind of new like me, like I was, and they were they were like, yeah, I kind of I like your resin salt, resin salt doll, can't say it, um, but I'm so afraid of buying it, of buying resin salt because I'm afraid other people's gonna like look down on my doll and not like, not talk to me because my dolls are cheaper than theirs. I think that's really ridiculous, like. I'm, I've always like, oh, if you like a doll, then I guess go ahead. As long as it's like a legit doll, I don't care. Do what you want. It's your money. If you enjoy it, do it for yourself. Like, I know some people actually buy dolls that are trendy so that other people would like them more. I don't understand that mentality. Really? People actually do that? Like, I don't know, because yeah. it's so foreign for me to under stand that because that's a lot of money like you know you're spending hundreds of dollars yeah just so people like you more I, I don't know I am like what <laughs> yeah for real because I actually um I say actually a lot I remember one person who I used to send my dolls to for face up she again left the hobby I don't know why she one day she just kind of disappeared um she cycles through dolls a lot. Like she got the doll and then she sell it immediately. Like not immediately, but like two two weeks later, she sell it, and she used that money to buy a different doll that was trendy at the time. I think her last doll was a an angelophilia. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, I've totally seen collectors who have, like, revolving doll doors where they always sell them immediately oh, yeah. after getting them. And that's, like, a weird way to collect, but, I mean, to each their own, but yeah, that is a really strange way to collect. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I com- guess. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. Go on. Sorry, no. Uh, you I was, know, I was gonna ask you guys, like, for dolls that you buy, do you, you usually keep them? Like, what would you say your percentage is at when it comes to, you know, buying a doll you see online and it arrives and you actually keeping it? I, I mean, I know with me, it's easy, either love or hate it right away, right when I open it. I mean, you never know until you get them if you'll actually like them or not. Yeah. But once you get them, you either know right away if it's going to stay or go. But I tend to keep the ones that I do get. Yeah, my, actually, like, I guess I'm 50-50 on it. I tend to sell my dolls sometimes because, like, at the at the time, I need the money for, like, vet bills or something that um just pop up unexpectedly but i i do keep my dolls for at least two months to see if i actually bond with them who is that who who's in my trial right now uh doll chateau julianne i just got like i think two weeks ago that arrived two weeks ago yeah she's on the trial right now she can't stand at all <laughs> i'm staring at her right now like I, she's sitting <laughs> on the on the shelf she can't stand at all. Her head is way too heavy. Her like horns is way too big for her to do anything. She flops around a lot. I don't know if I can deal with that because posing is really important to me. But, you know, we'll see after a month. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nova? Um, I mean, it, it. I can usually tell right away when I get one whether or not I'll keep it. Would you say but, most of the time you tend to keep your dolls? Yeah, I'm pretty refined in my taste over the years. I can tell right away, like, online if I will like it or not. But, I mean, there are some differences in person you don't expect, like posing. Posing has been an issue before, but, yeah. I mean, if I really like a doll, I'll suede it or something or work on it extra and make it pose better. That's cool. If it's worth keeping. <laughs> I know in our group chat, we've talked about like, you know, we're all like, <laughs> Taco Skate, Avari and I are like, oh my God, they're releasing this. Oh my God, I want this. <laughs> and Nova's like, yeah, I think the only temptation I'll have for the rest of the year is what Lutz does, maybe at the end of the year for winter. And we're all like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? That's the only thing I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, Doll Zone, Doll Chateau, Dream Valley, all these other companies, like even Fairland. I was thinking, yeah. oh my goodness, there's so many, and there's so many that I like. And then I was like, no, I'll just see. I'll just see if I'm self restrained. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. And I like to see in person, and usually I have an idea. If I actually spend the money, then chances are mm-hmm. I would probably like it enough to keep it. But um, sometimes you just want to see how, you know, how it looks in person. But yeah. yeah cool so I guess like I'm trying to think like when it comes to like elitism like how how would you say is the best way to like navigate situations like that and whether you're like new to the hobby or you've been in it a little bit longer like should you experience it like what advice would you have for like other people um in that position oh just probably not to take too seriously what other people say and I mean, if you're collecting for your own taste, then it doesn't really matter either. Yeah, that's like insane. what you like, then that's good okay. enough. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say what you you just say. Like, do this for yourself. Like, don't go and think, oh, I have to. I joined the hobby for to be popular. I feel like some newbies I've seen for the past year have been trying to do that. <laughs> they think that they can just make like a really crappy thing and they're like, all right, I'm going to sell this now. <laughs> just maybe refine your style. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going off topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We we have a general agenda, but it's totally okay. I think, I think, a lo- but I think that goes back to like, it all ties to elitism to some degree, right? Because yeah it's hard to say like do you want a finished doll or and I, I kind of get where you're coming from I don't think I could put it into words <laughs> yeah me neither like I I can't really put it into words but it just it's just that feeling just right there <laughs> mm, I don't know like a lot of like it's just like when they do that when they like or try to like dapple in making eyes or making wigs or making dolls anything for the dolls 
and just jump at any opportunity to buy a new doll. I feel like if you do that, you're a little bit fame hungry. You're a little bit fame hungry. That's that's my opinion. Like if you're gonna be buying and selling dolls that fast and trying your hand, at, like I'm not saying it's bad for you to experience. I'm mm-hmm. saying it's bad that you think that you can sell something that even you don't think is good for anything other than and for like money. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. A lot mean. of people uh, are quick to turn this hobby into money, like a financial yeah. thing that they can gain. And I, I don't think, think that should be a mentality that you have going into the hobby. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's true. And yeah, please go ahead because I think part of it is that you want to incentivize what you're doing because there's a cost for like learning new things, mm-hmm. sewing, making wigs, buying supplies to make eyes, all that stuff. But you know, I look at like the 3D printing is the best thing for me to say because that's something that I started doing recently. But I have a box, <laughs> actually, like yeah, a box full of rejected prints, like stuff that I did wrong. Yeah stuff that I didn't um you know print or orient correctly because I was trying to play some more video games instead of actually sitting down <laughs> and looking at what I'm doing so you know there, there's there's a box of like crappy prints but I don't feel comfortable like selling them because you know I, I find that there's some significant flaws mm-hmm. with them and I guess some people would do that but I also feel like at the end of the day it might water down what you do as a brand um if you have like low quality control items being sold as products and I guess people could accept that you know hey this is like a sample so to speak Mm -hmm. but when you actually release the doll would any or doll or um wig or eyes would people want to ever pay full price for them right so I really wasn't thinking of anybody specifically but just the fact that it was something I noticed in the hobby too is that even when I started making wigs for a long time I felt like my wigs were not you know, of a good caliber to sell. And I don't know, maybe I'm just really hard on myself, but actually I am. But <laughs> I wouldn't feel comfortable offering that because I felt like, would I be happy to own this? And there are some flaws that I needed to resolve and work on first. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's tough to want to um, get money for the hobby, but at the same time, you need to have a good skill set before you start charging for your work. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair because I actually have tried my hand at making wigs. I show you guys. Uh, Making eyes. It was bad. (laughs) It didn't come out right. And I didn't feel comfortable selling those. I actually just give them out for free. For anyone who buy my, who buy like the second hand dolls I was selling, I just give it to them for free if they want it. Yeah, that's a good way to do it and to say, hey, you know, these are just something I've worked on and, you know, it's it's free. <laughs> you can throw yeah. them away if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. So that's true. I get that. I've um, offered face-ups for free for the sake of practice before. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> have a lot of people do that. I think it's a good idea. You get a lot of practice like that and, it, you know, it benefits someone else. If they like it, that's good. I also do think when you when you do like that free free maybe a low price that's that's cool too. Um, it also gives people an idea of what it's like to actually sell and provide customer service to people oh, yeah. who are you know going to be buying from you, right? Yeah, that's fair. I think let's see when it comes to like navigating how to handle like elitism. Um, I think I've seen it, but I don't know if I've really experienced it firsthand myself because I, I tend to be an older collector as well. And it's just something that I don't have time for. I really don't. I, <laughs> and there are times that I'm on Instagram and I post a little bit more often, but I'm, I'm older. I'm going to be, I tell my age, I'm going to be 37 this year. So, um, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm at the point where like this petty online stuff, like I'll look at it and I'll be like, hmm, okay. I'm like, I know what's going on, but I don't, don't want to get involved. For that shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want time for that shit. I don't, I don't want to get involved because like I have bigger things to work on and um, to worry about like fighting my property taxes. <laughs> Very belching <laughs> stuff. But, um, I really am surprised at how people will get so obsessed over what other people do with their dolls. Oh my like, god! That's not yeah. what I would do with that doll, so I'm very mad at you. 
Yeah, like okay, <laughs> then get your own doll and do do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, do what you were gonna do. <laughs> yeah, like that one case of like um color face up, color dolls face up by Precious Lily. Oh, I man, think I, I think that's her. her name. Yeah, I feel I feel terrible for like because she got attacked for like no reason at all. They just kind of like they, they didn't like the face up, and then they shit on the face up artists. And that's what the customer asked them to paint. So it's like yeah. the artist is just doing what they were commissioned to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that's a thing. That's not. I don't. That's not the first time I've seen something like that either. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's. I think that's part of the elitism. That we experience in this hobby. Yeah. It's way too often. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's worth realizing that not everyone has the same aesthetic or the same ideas of mm-hmm. beauty. Mm-hmm. That yeah. You should allow the diversity that people are trying to bring. Oh, talking about the same, like, you know, how beauty is, you know, in the hands of the beholder. Uh, this doll, Amber, right here, she act, I actually got someone. I brought her to, like, a meet. Was it a meet? No, I, I think I was talking to someone online. Like, it was a group of, like, just doll people I randomly joined. And they were, like, I showed them this. And they were, like, they showed it, I showed them mo- some of my dolls. And they were, like, oh, yeah, she's the ugliest. I was, like, what the hell? <laughs> what did I do oh, to you? Right. She was the ugliest? She's really yeah. pretty. What the heck? Yeah, they were, like, <laughs> they straight up told me she was, she's the ugliest. Ugh. I was, like, why? Mm-hmm. What did I do to you? <laughs> Because, like, they think so, because I mod her eyes to be, like, oh, sorry, I'm going to take this away from you. I mod her eyes to be, like, smaller. I don't know if you can see it now. Yeah, see? I actually really like that about her, though. Like, some of the modded sculpts are always my uh, more favorite that I'd look at in a collection. Yeah, I feel like Mini Fee's uh, looks cuter when their eyes are smaller. I feel like they're a little bit more realistic that way, but that's just, like, my personal reference. But apparently not that person's reference. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, to each their own for sure. That was actually kind of funny. I'm just like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for your opinion. There's there's a lot of bad manners in this hobby. Oh and God, yeah. people just, <laughs> I, I don't know if they can read the room. And, and I get that there might be some people who might not be able to do that. But it's just like if someone told you, hey, I think your doll is the ugliest that I've ever seen or the ugliest out of your entire crew. Like, how I don't think anybody would be very receptive to that. <laughs> yeah, like what do you expect to get as a reaction if you're gonna say something like that? Like what are you expecting me to like explode? I, I'm not <laughs> gonna do that. <laughs> I will I will talk about it with my friend group, but I'm not gonna explode on you. <laughs> For sure. Let me see. I'm trying to look up the one because I I had something similar, although it was not somebody I personally knew, but they had, I posted one of my doll profiles on Den of Angels, and oh. um, I don't think I'll share it because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really want them to get hate or message about it yeah. because I'm like, honestly, don't spend your time. But <laughs> with my, um, I have the doll leaves May, and she has like the two faces, one on the front, one on the back. Oh, I remember that. I love her. I actually do love her. I should get her. <laughs> she's cool. I love her. And she's not sold out yet, even though she's been out and she's been limited. Although somehow I got a lot of downvotes on my May box opening because I said I really hated her full set. I guess that's upset a lot of people. <laughs> but I really don't like the clothes that came with it because they seem like such an afterthought. And I would have just wanted the doll on the face. I was okay with that. But um, someone had left a comment on the profile saying, she looks really pretty, though. I kind of dislike the head sculpts and that I don't like that there are two faces on one head, and I kind of want them to be separate heads. I like the unusual, too, just not done in this way. And that I saw a that. a really weird take on a doll. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it looks really pretty, but you know, I just <laughs> like this and I think the idea is not clever. And I was like, uh, what? It was like, what? So I responded and I said, Well, I love the head. I love the head that it has two faces. And mm-hmm. it's the reason why I got her, you know, especially Yeah, that's a selling point, right? Right. <laughs> since a lot of and I said, and especially since a majority of heads have only one face. 
good thing about ball jointed dolls is that you can find the one that suits your taste. And I'm like, she yeah. didn't even like my profile. She liked it enough to leave a comment to like neg me. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Um, you do you sis. Like, I, I don't know what to say to that. You know, it's just, it's just rude. It's just yeah. people are just rude. So. Oh, by the way, talking about May, do you actually have her um, full set right now? Because I think they only sell her in a full set, right? They do. Um, the full set is, I, I have it in the box somewhere. She's okay. naked as usual. They're all naked. Um, <laughs> I was trying to make her like, I named her Theodora. And I'll probably bring her for the next next episode we do. Yes, please. I, I want to see her. <laughs> but, um, but I was trying to sew her some medieval garments and apparently like there's a lot of very specific things to do period clothing and I started getting in my head that I had to look accurate but then I cheated and made a modern take on um, a medieval outfit and then I was like can I salvage it because I started embroidering a bunch of stuff and then I gave up so <laughs> but she's gonna be Fine. like a queen like, like a queen who um, was wearing like a white gown I based it off this illustration but was constructing it using uh some modern construction techniques but yeah but I'll, I'll bring her next time since you guys have a question yes please do I, lo I love her I like I really like how she's doll lives are like brave enough mm -hmm. to make her yeah it's she's a cool doll like it's yeah like <clears throat> I don't know why that lady felt the need to tell me that she sucked, <laughs> but okay, like, like, I thought she was cool, and everybody else who I talked to, even though it's not their taste, they're like, yeah. it's still cool in theory. <laughs> How do you find wigs for her? Do you make her the wigs? So she can wear regular ones, but like the what, like, I did make her one where mm. it's just like, kind of like, if it was, it was just kind of like on the top of the head. Yeah, so that's like what I was cap. thinking. So, <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's good enough. <laughs> I'll actually have her maybe wearing something. We'll see. <laughs> but she will have a wig on and okay, a face great. up. So she won't be completely bare for next time. But yeah. So, um, yeah. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think for part of like what we had talked about, like um, with people with dolls, if they want to mod them, change them. I mean, who cares? Like I don't, again, yeah. I tend to be older. I, I don't know. If, I don't think it's just exclusive to age, but if it's your property, you bought it, you can do whatever you want. If you want to put, like, I don't know, if you want to smash it into a billion pieces and then re-glue them to make it cool and art, that's cool, too. Like, I don't know. I'm just more like, live and let live. I really don't care mm -hmm. what people do with their dolls. Like, nothing is really irreparable, but some people like mods, and they're okay with it. They can live with it. Yeah, like, as long as you like it, do it. Who cares what other people say? I personally love seeing the mods, too. Some of my favorite dolls that I've seen of other people's have been modded ones. Sometimes the sculpt is just not exactly right. So you have to do it yourself. <laughs> For sure. And like one thing that I know that some of the mods people do, like the smaller <coughs> smaller eyes, they look really good. Um, oh, yeah. I've also seen people like kind of like bevel out the eyes so that the, you know, the glass eyes or resin eyes, whatever eyes you put in, they <laughs> look nicer, you know, in the doll head. Yeah. I have actually has some heads that just doesn't fit in because the eye whales inside was sculpted too tight or too or too big. I should have that mod now. <laughs> You're like, hmm, I think I want to do a mod now. <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to add to the elitism discussion because I think I, we all share very similar perspectives on like live and let live. You know, mind your own business. Have some mind your own business. I mean, really, you know, and have that's some true, good manners. True. Be polite to people. Um, that's pretty much it. And if people are rude to you, like, don't let it bring you down. Like, you don't mm -hmm. really know them. And if it's somebody that you're close to, then I would really look upon it, you know, in the sense that this is somebody that knows you pretty well. Why would they say something so mean and hurtful to you? And I would probably yeah. reassess, you know, our relationship to some degree <laughs> or set up some more boundaries or something. But if it's just strangers on the internet, and I know, like, that can bog down a lot of people, um, honestly, like, it's easier to say this, but once you start turning off your computer, turning off the notifications, start, like, you know, for me, I had to uninstall Instagram, because I was like, oh, let me look at, not uninstall Instagram, uninstall Instagram metrics. Um, it was starting to get to me. Oh. And yeah, that was really, really watering down my enjoyment of what I was doing. 
And since I've booted it out, <clears throat> there are times where I'm tempted to look at it and I'm like curious, but you know, th- that never helps anybody. So do you guys have anything yeah. else to add? I actually have tried using that before, like using something similar to that. Like, oh, uh, I want to count my followers. I want to see who blocks me. I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> very intense about it for like a year or so. And I don't know, after that, it's just kind of like, at one point, I just don't want to do it anymore. I just like, I just think it's too, yeah, I just think it's too much there's no more enjoyment in the hobby if you keep if you like uh care too much about your follower base yeah you gotta collect for the dolls and your love for them it can't be for other people at all mm-hmm. right and, and you have to be uh all right with starting somewhere the hobby does need mold breakers so i mean don't beat yourself up if what you do isn't instantly liked yeah Give it time build your style all very good points and sorry to <laughs> almost interrupt you Nova but um, I think that brings up a good point too is that if you're looking for like a place to hang out and I know that we're kind of promoting our discord here but um, all of us are really like chill I would say like live and let live like I, I won't do the same speech that I did a while ago but <laughs> if you just want somebody to talk to or share your dolls or whatever like you know we encourage you to post on our discord um yeah, for discord. I like, yeah i like hearing and seeing various dolls because like i said i get enabled by many people including you two oh, yeah. over here so <laughs> <laughs> but you know if you're but i think that's one thing that a lot of people struggle with in the hobby is not having connections with people and if you do want a connection you know we're here i'm usually on the discord i have it on just because oh same yeah yeah i mean it's always running in the background for me so if you guys want to <laughs> you know share or you know have a network to talk to you know we're here for you we welcome it um yeah so that's yeah that's pretty much all i have to say do you guys have anything else to add i don't know i was just gonna <laughs> promote the discord chat more <laughs> <laughs> so if you like we have a lot of channel that you can just put random stuff in we have just we have like workspace workspace we have just like a show off corner where you can just post your dolls you know show your show your work in progress whatever you want join us <laughs> good call yeah so all of us are there but like we all also talk to each other and there's no point for us to duplicate it like in multiple channels although sometimes they still post things there but um yeah we're happy to engage you and you know we welcome fresh blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cool. Well, okay. I think that's, that's it for today's episode. And I guess if anybody else has any other suggestions or feedback or episodes you would like to see us discuss further um, in further detail, please leave them down in the comments or like we said, join our discord and tell us. So yeah, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.